Angles can be... So this is our 11.1. .1. We're on page 98 now of your notebook, your workbook. Um, angles can be measured more carefully in degrees, minutes, and seconds, or written as decimal degrees. Each degree, just like time, if you think of the degree as the hour, each degree or hour can be broken down into 60 minutes, and each minute, just like time, can be broken down into 60 seconds. So we'll look at this and how to convert it. The 17 in front is the full number of degrees. So it's this 0.5 part that we need to deal with and change to minutes. So if we have 0.5 degrees over one, and remember that we really have that one degree is equal to 60 minutes. We write 60, we write the minutes with one mark. So we can put that one degree on the bottom and the 60 minutes on the top. That allows the degrees to cancel out. This also tells us to multiply straight across. So 0.5 times 60 is 30. One times one is one. So we have 30 minutes. So we write that up here. So 17.5 degrees is the same as 17 degrees, 30 minutes. Let's do the same for part B. We'll start with 36. That's our number of degrees. We'll take 0.25 degrees over 1 times 60 minutes over 1 degree. And again, we put the degrees in the bottom because the, the first fraction has the degrees in the top, and that's what makes things cancel out. If we multiply straight across, we get 15 minutes over 1, or 15 minutes. So here we're going to go the other direction. Here we have the 72 minute um, degrees, and we want to change these minutes. So we have 6 minutes over 1. And remember again, 1 degree is equal to 60 minutes. So we're going to times, but we're going to put the 60 minutes on the bottom and the 1 degree on the top, and that's so that the minutes cancel out. If we multiply straight across, we get 6 degrees over 60. And if you take 6 divided by 60, you get 0.1 degree. So we'll take this 0.1 and add it back to the 72 and we get 72.1 degrees. We can add them together now because now they're both degrees. So let's do the same thing over here. We have 48 minutes over 1 times 1 degree over 60 minutes. The minutes will cancel out. We multiply straight across, that gives us 48 degrees over 60. I take 48 divided by 60, I get 0.8 degrees. So I'm going to add that back to the 10, and I get 10.8 degrees. Um, we'll skip this example 3. It's the same idea as the others, it just is giving you some more practice. And let's talk about um, the special triangle. And there are really two special triangles. There's 45, 45, 90 special triangles and 30, 60, 90 special triangles. But we'll just talk about this 45, 45, 90. And that's what we have drawn here. Now the reason this is important is because in every 45, 45, 90 triangle, the sides that are across from the 45 degree angles are the same as each other. If we have two angles that are the same, we always have an isosceles triangle. So here, if those are x, then the hypotenuse, the side across from the right angle, which we've talked about before, is x times the square root of 2. And it's always that relationship with a 45-45-90 triangle. So let's look at this here. It tells us we have a 45-45-90 triangle. And it tells us a leg is 2, and it wants us to find the length of the other leg and the hypotenuse. So this is given to us, but we know that the other leg is also 2, and the hypotenuse then would be 2 times the square root of 2. 
it tells us to give our answer an exact form, so we just want to leave it like that. So the other leg is 2 inches, and the hypotenuse is 2 square root of 2 inches. So here we have xy is 4.6 centimeters. Find xz and yz. Also find angle z. Round your answer to the nearest tenth. So here, let's find the angle first. Here we know angle X is 45, angle Y is 90, 180 degrees in a triangle. So if I subtract the 90 and I subtract the 45, I know that my other angle has to be 45 degrees. So I have a 45, 45, 90 triangle. So that tells me that if Y, X, or X, Y, this side here is 4.6, the other side that makes the right angle comes together to form that right angle has to be 4.6 as well. So this side right here, or YZ, is 4.6 centimeters also. So now let's talk about the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse then would be 4.6 times the square root of 2. Hypotenuse is XZ. Now it wants us to find the nearest tenth, so we're going to take 4.6 times the square root of 2, and that says 6.50538. So the nearest tenth would be right here. The zero afterwards tells us to leave that a 5, so we get 6.5 centimeters.